I really struggle to see why you would be against taking protein powder and why you would think it's not a good idea. My name is Harry Cox and I'm the owner of Club Q, which is a private personal training gym here in central London. And today we're gonna to be talking all things protein powder. So we're gonna talk about the common misconceptions of protein powder, the three main reasons I think you should be taking protein powder, which protein powder you should be buying for you. And finally, if there are any circumstances in which protein powder should be completely off the table. We are going to start with misconceptions because I feel like if I clear up this misconception, it will actually answer a lot of your questions off the bat. I would say the biggest misconception when it comes to protein powder is the idea that it is this silver bullet. It is this magic powder that when you consume it, you will become Mr. Olympia. And it's funny because I was that guy. When I was a teenager, I was desperate to get my hands on some protein powder because I finally thought it might make me put on 50 pounds of muscle tissue and start to look like my heroes, Ronnie Coleman and Jay Cutler. However, that's obviously not the case. And the lens I view protein powder through now is very, very different. I simply view protein powder as food. To me now, a scoop of protein powder is the same as if I was to eat a tin of tuna. Having a protein shake is similar to me consuming a chicken breast. And I think if you can adopt that lens as well, that really just changes the way you view protein powder completely. Because at the end of the day, protein powder is just powdered down food, which is one of the reasons why it's so great. Protein powder is so convenient. It takes zero preparation time, zero knowledge of how to cook, no effort whatsoever. All you need is the powder and something to dilute it in. So if you're running late in the morning and need a quick protein hit, you can make that in under 60 seconds. Or you're in between classes or meetings, it's really easy to make and consume in such a short period of time. A huge advantage of protein powder is also the cost. Now it can seem very expensive when you buy a 50 pound tub. However, all protein sources are relatively expensive. And actually, when you do the maths on the grams of protein you get per Great British Pound, it's actually very competitive, if not slightly better, than chicken and beef. You'll get roughly 40 grams of protein per Great British Pound from protein powder. Whereas when it comes to beef and chicken, you're looking more like 36 grams slash 38 grams per Great British Pound. So comparatively, it really is not expensive at all. Protein powder also tastes really good. I remember about a decade ago when I had my first protein powders, they tasted awful. They tasted chalky. They didn't really have much sweetness to them. However, now they all taste like freaking desserts. They're great to add into recipes as well. A scoop of protein in your oatmeal turns your boring bowl of oats into something that you look forward to every single day. It usually ends up becoming some kind of weird obsession. I also love adding it to Greek yogurt because it just gives it that little bit of flavor. Protein powder are great for curbing that sweet tooth. So I might have convinced you now that protein powder is maybe a good idea. However, are there people out there that protein powder is not for them? Well, I struggle to find that demographic. Perhaps the main or only reason I can think of for not taking a protein powder would be for those who are not very tolerant to lactose. Given that most protein powders are a derivative of milk protein, they are quite high in lactose, so some people will struggle to digest them. However, with that being said, you could always look at an alternative. There are now plenty of vegan protein powders out there. So you'll then still get the benefits of the convenience, the taste, the price, hopefully without upsetting your stomach too much. So with all that said and done, you now decided you're going to purchase protein powder. Which protein powder should you buy? In a world of incredibly well-marketed products, it can be very, very confusing making this decision. And now it would also be a great time for me to like sell you something if I was affiliated with a brand. However, I'm not, so therefore you can now trust what I'm about to say to you. So you've got different types of protein powder. For 90% of you watching this video, whey protein powder is going to be your go-to. It's quite fast digesting in comparison to some of the others, but it is kind of just the standard thing to go for. When it comes to whey protein powder, you've got two camps. You've got a normal whey protein and then you've got a whey protein isolate. To simplify things, a whey isolate is kind of like a purer, slightly higher quality version of whey. It tends to be a little bit more expensive for that reason. Can digest a little bit better as well. Most people will be fine with your standard whey protein blend. So then it comes down to brands, I suppose. From an amino acid standpoint, you want to make sure each serving of that whey protein has three to four grams 
grams of leucine. However, most brands don't actually put the amino acid profile on. It can be quite hard to find. So I tend to just go based on the brand's reputation. You should take comfort in the fact though that most of them are relatively similar. With all of that said though, I do want to say whey protein is not the be all and end all. It is not a silver bullet. Whilst it is convenient, it is cheap, it is tasty. If you don't include it in your diet ever, you're still gonna be able to make the exact same progress as anyone else who is including it. Just instead of having your shake, you have a chicken breast instead. A lot of people are super pro whole foods and I do think the majority of your diet should be made up of whole foods and you probably shouldn't just exclusively drink protein shakes for your protein intake. However, you'll be more than fine to have a protein shake or two a day and you won't have any issues.